So what is the genetic basis of SMA? First thing that you need to know, it, it shows a autosomal recessive inheritance. So inheritance wise, it shows a autosomal recessive inheritance. The gene involved in SMA is called as SMN1 gene. SMN1 gene which is present on chromosome 5q13. So 5q13 is the location where this SMN gene is present. SMN basically stands for survival motor neuron. So SMN full form is survival motor neuron. The, what is the normal function of this gene? Normal function of this gene is to prevent apoptosis of motor neuron neuroblasts. Right? If both alleles, it is a recessive condition, remember. So if both alleles are lost due to mutation, it will lead to increased apoptosis primarily affecting the motor neuroblasts in the spinal cord which will lead to the development of SMA, right? You need to understand that uh, the process, it's basically what, what is happening is when in utero the child is there and uh, in utero the neuroblasts are forming, neural crest derivatives and uh, spinal cord is forming and all these neurons are forming. There is an excess of neuroblasts which are formed. Many of these neuroblasts, they are not needed in later life and so there is a process which begins in the excess neuroblast. The process is called as apoptosis. The extra neuroblasts are basically, they, they tend to die, they are not needed by the body. The neuroblasts which are actually going to form the anterior horn cells of spinal cord, they do not undergo apoptosis. Their apoptosis is prevented by the product of SMN1 gene. So it does not allow that process of apoptosis to be extended to the actual cells which are going to form cells of the spinal cord. Now what happens is when SMN1 gene will be lost, the proteins formed by SMN1 gene will not be there to protect those neurons. And so the apoptosis process which starts from excess primitive neuroblast, it gets extended to the actual cells of the anterior horn cell of spinal cord also. And this process of apoptosis continues postnatally in life as well which leads to progressive loss, progressive death, progressive degeneration of spinal motor neurons and the disease manifests, right? This is the reason why disease manifests. Now, there is a very interesting thing here. In all humans, you and me included, there is another copy of SMN called as SMN2. It has a sister duplicate gene. There is in all individuals, so I would say in all individuals, in all individuals, there is also a duplicate gene present in the same location near centromere called as SMN2. Right? SMN2 is normally present in every person. But SMN2 is a very lazy gene. Why? What is the difference between SMN1 and SMN2? SMN2 gene is, uh, it is usually a relatively less functional gene. The difference between SMN1 and SMN2 is at position, in SMN2, at position 840, at position 840, there is an exon called as exon 7. In this exon 7, normally in SMN1, there is a cytosine residue which is present. This cytosine residue is converted, it is changed, it, it has been replaced by thiamine, right? So this C to T conversion, this is the only difference between SMN1 and SMN2. So SMN1, SMN2 exactly same, the only difference being at position 840, exon 7, in SMN1 you have cytosine residue, in place of SMN2 you have thiamine residue. So what exactly happens? Let us try to see diagrammatically what exactly is happening. You know that there is a process. Initially, uh, what happens during protein formation? Initially from DNA, there will be formation of pre-mRNA. And this, this pre-mRNA will undergo splicing by spliceosomes to form the mature mRNA. This mature mRNA will form the protein. 
This is the normal process, right? Look at this process, what is happening? Let us look at first SMN1 may what is happening. Look at exon 7. Exon 7 is having cytosine residue. So, this process of pre mRNA normally formed in both SMN1 and SMN2. But when the process of splicing happens, this SMN1 is normally, uh, uh, the splicing happens normally and a very stable protein called as normal SMN protein levels are found. This is what normally happens. In SMN2, in every individual, you and me as well, this is what is happening in normal person. I am talking about normal, not disease, right? In SMN2, uh, in normal person, SMN2, you will find that there is thiamine residue on ex exon 7. Because of this, when splicing happens, there is an unstable protein which is formed. And because of this unstable protein, very low SMN protein levels, this unstable mRNA, there are very low SMN protein levels which are found. What normally happens is, to summarize, if I have to summarize, if I have to summarize in a normal person, that is you and me, almost 90% of SMN protein is coded by SMN1 gene, right? It is coded by SMN1 gene and only about 10% of SMN protein is contributed by SMN2 gene normal persons, right? Why? Because defective exon 7 is there in SMN2, which leads to increased splicing of pre-mRNA in these patients, leading to increased turnover of unstable product. So, what we find is only 10% of the protein, maximum up to 10% is contributed by SMN2. So, for all practical purpose, SMN1 gene is called as the functional gene. SMN2 gene is a sister gene which, is, which remains relatively, uh, you know, non-functional, relatively non-functional. It is not completely silent, relatively non-functional. Now, imagine a scenario in a diseased state. What will happen? In a diseased person, there will be mutation in the SMN1 gene. This is complicated, so I am going trying to slow, uh, go slow and trying to explain in simple words. Mutation will happen in SMN1 gene, so there will be no protein formed from SMN1. So what will happen? The entire SMN protein is now the responsibility of SMN2, but it cannot produce more than 10% of the product, which leads to deficiency of SMN protein. This deficiency of SMN protein will lead to develop the death of motor neurons, leading to the disease getting produced. So, SMN2 is there, but it is not able to compensate for it. I will give you an example. There are two twin brothers in a family, right? One twin brother, they are the only persons who earn for the family. The entire family is dependent upon them. The first twin is a very well-educated man, responsible man, and he is the one who earns everything for the family. He works, he has a good white-collar job, and he earns the entire things for the family, and he earns rupees 1 lakh per month, and that is how the family functions. The other person, the, his twin, he is a lazy man, and he is not very fond of working, and all he does is sit at home, create some YouTube videos, do some random things, sit at uh, work at some place and he earns say, uh, say about 5-10,000 per month, which is not sufficient for the family to function. But because the first twin is functioning normally, he is earning normally, the family is happy and they are doing fine. Now due to some reason, unfortunately, the first twin, there is an accident and he dies. Now the entire role of earning will fall, fall on the person, the second twin, which is, which is sitting at home. Because he is able to earn only about five to 10,000 per month, now the family cannot pay their bills, they cannot buy their food, and so there will be progressive deterioration in the quality of life in the family. There will be fights, there will be uh, episodes of starvation, and eventually the family will disintegrate. 
This is because the other twin is not able to function normally. The functioning twin is gone. This is what happens in spinal muscular atrophy. What it also means is that if somehow, if somehow this SMN2 gene, instead of there being one copy, there are two copies, three copies or four copies. So what will happen is each copy will produce 10% product. So 10, 20, 30, 40. So 40% protein is being able to produce. Still the disease will be milder. So there are cases where spinal muscular atrophy is found to be mild. It is mild because SMN1 is lost. But SMN2, nature has ensured that multiple copies are there and so the patient is able to undergo some protein synthesis and the patient is able to still produce some functional protein. So the disease will be mild. I know it is a very, very complicated thing. I don't want to show you complicated flow charts. I don't want to write down everything. But my function is, my purpose is to make you understand the pathophysiology of this thing. So listen to the entire content which I spoke just now by going back maybe in 2x mode and then continue again from here. Once your concept is clear, the disease will be very easy for you to understand, right? So to summarize, SMN1 prevents death of spinal motor neurons. This contributes, the protein formed is protective for the motor neurons. SMN1 forms 90% of that protein. SMN2, sister protein, forms only 10%. When SMN1 gets mutated, the protein formation drastically reduces. The anterior motor horn cells tend to die. SMN2 itself cannot compensate for that. And so there is progressive motor neuron loss leading to progressive muscle weakness. Understood? Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.